20 years ago, Dr. Judy Griffin, a nutritional chemist, was diagnosed with Crohn's disease, a potentially fatal illness. Trained in science, she investigated the various traditional avenues available to her. But in the end, Dr. Griffin chose a very non-traditional way to heal herself. I had Crohn's disease, which is a life-threatening, serious type of disease that affects, for me, it affected the small intestine, and it's an inflammation, it's an autoimmune disease. And I was in pain every day from the inflammation. And I'd be rolled up in a ball in pain, and my options were to take heavy dose steroids and immune suppressing drugs, which I didn't want to take. So I was praying for guidance. At this critical point in her life, Dr. Griffin went into her garden, the place she loved most. It was in this peaceful setting that she received the guidance that would change her life forever. And the message I started getting you know, very quickly was to work with flowers. And I thought maybe I wasn't hearing right. <laughs> I really <laughs> wanted to get out of pain. And when you're in a lot, a lot of pain, nothing else matters except getting out of pain. Eventually, very shortly, I got the idea that I was supposed to make flower essences. And I just started working with the ones that I had around in my yard, and I, I would get out of pain. According to Dr. Griffin, her inner guidance led her to discover the healing quality of flower essences. Following the information given to her by the flowers, she formulated her first essence and began regular treatments. Miraculously, her Crohn's disease went into remission and remains so today. I had twins and they were born with immune problems. They were actually immune deficiencies. They didn't call it that 25 years ago. But they were so-called allergic to everything. They, their skin bled all the time. They'd have 105 fevers. One would go into anaphylactic shock. One would have asthma. And so I started working with essences with them. And at first, everybody thought I was really stupid and crazy. But within six weeks, people were telling me that they could tell a big difference. Within a year and a half to two years, there was, you know, they were doing normal things all the time. But most important, they were alive. <laughs> they were well. My youngest son, he was born four years after the twins. And when he was two years old, he was actually tested and diagnosed as uh, having a 50% hearing loss. And this was neuronal damage. He was not supposed to be able to get this back. I really couldn't quite accept that. It didn't feel right, and I felt like I could find an essence that would help him, and lavender is what I was guided to. After three weeks of using the essence, I took Jason back to the doctor and had him retested again, and his hearing tested perfect. I asked the doctors about the neurological damage, and they had nothing to say. I told them what I was doing with the essence, and they told me to go home and keep doing it. It was obviously working. Using her background in chemistry, she created a unique way of bringing the message of the flowers to the world. The more open they are, the more creative energy that they have express, expressing, and the more of the lipoic acid and the different hormones that I express and extract from these flowers. While there are many different ways to make flower essences, Dr. Griffin's method uses only pure organic ingredients combined with her ability to attune to the flowers themselves. According to Dr. Griffin, the oil's aroma goes directly to our brain, producing hormonal and neurochemical responses that flow through our bloodstream. This often results in an enhancement to our immune system, as well as helping to reduce stress in our body. Flower essences can be used anywhere on your skin, but to be most effective, Dr. Griffin recommends applying them to the pulse points, such as the wrists, the temples, and the throat. Another location is an acupuncture point used in oriental medicine, known as Shen Wen. Located in the right ear, just above the ear opening, it is where five cranial nerves converge into a ganglia. This point optimizes the effect of the essences throughout the nervous system. Through an ongoing dialogue with the flowers, Dr. Griffin continued to find new ways to use the essences, and over time, developed more than 100 products from flowers she grew in her garden.
These products addressed a wide range of health issues, from memory enhancement, building self-esteem, and weight loss, to a complementary approach for the management of pain. One patient I can think of uh, came to me and she already was in stage three breast cancer, um, very high infiltration in the ducts. First thing, she wanted me to have a biopsy because she says, I want to know what we're dealing with here, Diane. And since I knew she was already working with medical doctors and nurses, I felt comfortable because Judy made me feel comfortable. Right before I went into surgery, they came and they got me and they said, okay, you're gonna have to go an hour early. And I went, oh no, and I panicked. And so I grabbed the flower essence and I put them on and went down. And the anesthetist said to my husband that I was so easy to work with because I was so calm. When she went into the hospital, she used um, Bouquet of Harmony, which is a combination, a trilogy of essences that I used. And what was remarkable about that is uh, she went after mastectomy, she didn't need pain medication. And that, I, anybody that's had surgery before, that's quite remarkable, because they offer you morphine. And she used her essences instead. And when I saw my plastic surgeon, I had my surgery on Wednesday, and the following Wednesday, I went to see him at his office. And he's asked me how I was doing with pain, and I said, I have zero. And I mean, I wasn't being a martyr. I was of zero. There was no pain at all, and all I was using was Judy's flower essence. Another remarkable thing that happened with this patient is she didn't lose her hair during chemotherapy or her eyebrows. Okay, this is not my hair now. This is a wig. And um, underneath, though, it even though I didn't lose, even though I lost half my thickness, to have some hair, it's great. When you go slick bald, I mean, anyone that's been through treatment, particularly a woman, will tell you that's the number one thing that they dread and they have the hardest time with is losing their hair. So I called Judy and I said, do you have anything that I can take or use that would help my hair keep it from falling out? And so she says, I have some shampoo and it's her, her lemon thyme shampoo that's for a damaged hair. So I got it and I started using it and within Oh, two days, my uh, scalp stopped hurting. And usually with Taxotere, you, you, you um, lose your eyebrows and your hair. I mean, you just lose everything. I've never lost any of my eyebrows, and I wash them with her shampoo. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you, but I do. And my oncologist, when I saw him this last time, he was just amazed again that my hair, that I had my eyebrows, because he said it usually wipes out everything. He said that was really rare. The success of Essence Therapy to relieve pain in some of Dr. Griffin's cancer patients was encouraging. But behind it all was the question, would her research with flower essences ever be accepted in the high-tech world of CAT scans, magnetic resonance imaging, and radiation therapy? The answer came when a newspaper article featuring her work led to an invitation to Baylor University Medical Center in Dallas, Texas. Baylor is one of the leaders of integrative medicine, which combines the best that medical science has to offer with complementary approaches. Their philosophy reflects a new trend in medicine, the blend of spiritual and emotional nurturing with traditional physical care. A year ago, we contacted Dr. Judy Griffin. I did. Um, I saw a write-up in one of the Fort Worth newspapers and I said, I need this in my own personal life, let me give her a call, so I did and had a consult with her and found that I was benefiting personally from the essences that she was providing for me and we talked about how has she been using this in other parts of the world in her private practice and how can we begin to start using it perhaps at Baylor. They invited me to come and do an aromatherapy study with them, and the aromatherapy would include the flower essences as well as essential oils that I would make. Our, our patients that are going through chemotherapy have to take a lot of high-dose drugs. So if we don't have to introduce into their body any other drug or chemical, that's positive and that's helpful for their recovery. Uh, we're finding that the essence helps them to reduce their pain, their anxiety, and specifically on the pain scale, we're seeing it through numbers, and we're able to document that. We did have a patient about, um, oh, probably about eight months ago. 
she did not like to lose control. And any time that she used pain medication, she was finding that she could not speak clearly. Um, she was hallucinating. And um, because the pain was taking up so much of her emotional energy, it was keeping her from being able to heal physically. She was kneeling in the middle of her bed, rocking back and forth, and wanting anything to get rid of the pain except the pain medication. So the doctors asked us to come in and see whether or not there was something that we could help her to gain some control. And we used the flower essence, the bouquet of harmony. We used breathing techniques, uh, visualization and refocusing. And a combination of these, we were able to bring her down from nine on the pain scale, 10 point pain scale, to three. She thought it was wonderful. The team thought it was wonderful. The doctors thought it was wonderful because she was able to then use her physical energy to help heal the body rather than being overwhelmed with the uh, emotional energy it was taking to overcome the pain. And I was to the point where I was thinking that it didn't matter if I lived or I died. You just on some level start giving up and your body starts giving up. Flower essences heal in my opinion, in my experience, by releasing suppressed energy. So all the hurts and all the fears, all the things that are holding you back are just released like a ribbon on time. The scent of any flower or herb or essence goes directly to the brain. And your brain is a hologram. Everything that's happening in your brain happens immediately in your body. So when you smell lavender or use a lavender essence on the body, it's going to immediately make a difference everywhere in your body. Your body will get the whole message to heal, which is, is what we look for in a holistic approach of healing the person as well as the body. The products and the flower essences I make in Texas are really really effective because these plants bloom under such high stress. I received guidance from the flower as to what it could help us with and from what they explained to me they bloom under stress and we can do the same thing. Nate Marston was diagnosed with multiple myeloma, a deadly immune suppressing cancer. The recommended treatment is a painful bone marrow transplant However, since few people actually survive this form of cancer, Nate looked for an alternative. After consulting with Dr. Griffin and oncologists from several hospitals, he realized he had nothing to lose by trying something as unconventional as flower essence therapy. We kept working with essences and uh, I did use some nutrition and herbs with them as, as was appropriate. And um, within two and a half years, instead of uh, really not even being alive. This person was still here. He was in good health. He had not lost weight or gained an unusual amount of weight. He looked just almost exactly as good as when he walked in the door originally. By observing the effects of various flower essences on her clients, Dr. Griffin has compiled an impressive list of dramatic healings, from overcoming poor concentration to managing the pain of chemotherapy. Children are especially uh, prone to uh, experiencing flower essences in a positive way. They don't have a lot of um, baggage, let's call it emotional baggage, so they respond very quickly. We have children with colic who calm down when they use an essence like dill or chamomile and you can use it right on their tummy. Um, you have children who are angry. I had one a family that came and the, the mother was very busy and preoccupied and one of the children responded to this by screaming all the time. He'd just yell at the top of his voice and there were other children in the family and everybody just sat around and everything revolved around this child. And I used a combination that I now call abate anger and the child calmed down within five seconds and never screamed again after we put that essence on him in our consultation and of course they took some home with them. Texas school teacher Lisa Wilson put flower essence therapy to the test when she requested Dr. Griffin's assistance in a simple experiment. Her sixth grade class of attention deficit children needed special help for a very important standardized test. 
Together, they came up with a new blend, which produced some surprising results. When they started smelling the essences on my arm, you would watch them anywhere from 20, 30 seconds to a minute. Calm down and begin to read again, begin to do a math problem again, whatever they were working on. I noticed a remarkable difference. My sixth graders stayed on task longer than the seventh and eighth graders did in the same room. As a massage therapist, Janet Taylor uses flower essences on her patients to help alleviate stress and release deep-seated emotions trapped in the muscles. While most of her clients are human beings, occasionally she is asked to make an unusual house call. I was asked to uh, treat a horse who had been a uh, wonderful competitor in the, the ring and then had an injury and then was frightened of the ring and wouldn't go near it and they had tried all kinds of uh, training techniques and they had tied the horse and punished the horse and rewarded the horse and had no effect and uh, so I went out thinking well maybe we can try some of the bouquet of harmony and calm it down maybe it's just afraid and within five minutes it was looking out of my hand and uh, within I think it was about two weeks they had it back in the ring and showing and making big bugs. Flower essences are a catalyst. I don't know that there are any cures. We are the cure, and flowers see us that way. They see us as already well. They um, hold the vision that we can get well on our own, and they work as a catalyst to promote that. As we enter the 21st century, Western medicine is beginning to see the human body as whole, rather than separate parts. And as a result, our concept of how to treat disease is changing. Doctors are finding that by bringing balance to our emotional states, our natural ability to heal is unblocked. The pioneering research of Dr. Griffin and others is showing that flowers are conscious beings and are here to help us gently reconnect with ourselves. Perhaps the future of medicine will be a blend of high-tech medical science and more natural methods of healing such as the transformative power that exists in a simple flower.